Hello everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful start to the week and I'm really looking forward to sharing 12 brilliant books that I think you should read if you love Jane Austen. I couldn't let Jane Austen July go by without doing a Jane Austen related video so I'm really excited to share my suggestions with you. Also I'm doing a little thank you and a little announcement message at the end of this video so do stick around for that but yes as I said today I'm sharing 12 books I think you should read if you enjoy Jane Austen's writing I'm the biggest Jane Austen fan so it's been a lot of fun for me to compile this list I've chosen some fiction and some non-fiction books all of them are either connected to Jane Austen's work her novels or her life in some way so I really hope that you enjoy my recommendations. Let's start with the first one, which is My Dear Charlotte by Hazel Holt. I will be really excited if there's someone else out there who knows this book and loves it too, because I don't think it's talked about enough, it doesn't have the recognition it deserves. I think this is such a great fiction book to read if you love Jane Austen. You know I love Hazel Holt already, she wrote the Mrs Mallory cosy British mysteries which are a lot of fun but this is a bit of fan fiction in a way that she wrote because she was a huge fan of Jane Austen. This is a book written in letters and it's about a sister corresponding with her other sister who's gone off travelling, she's visiting relatives and Eleanor is staying at home in Lyme and some strange happenings start happen start to occur in her in the society in which Eleanor lives. There's a bit of a mystery in fact in this book, there's a suspicious death and Eleanor gets involved with helping the local magistrate to sort out what actually happened. So it's a lovely premise for a story and what Hazel Holt has done with this is I think very clever. She's used many lines from Jane Austen's original letters, many of which of course she wrote to her sister Cassandra. In this book it's Eleanor writing to her sister Charlotte and Hazel Holt has interwoven into her text some of these real lines from Jane Austen's letters and it's really seamlessly done. I enjoy fiction inspired by Jane Austen that really matches the language of Jane Austen as closely as possible, I mean you, you can't really match Jane Austen but I have to say that Hazel Holt does a very very good job. It's really hard to tell where Jane Austen's own sentences come in and what is in fact just Hazel Holt. So I think that's an amazing accomplishment. I love novels in letters as well and this is a great one to read if you do too. It's very light, it's very easy to get through. I think the paperback might be a little bit hard to find but there's definitely a Kindle version of this I believe and I just really do recommend it. If you love Jane Austen's books you'll pick up on many references to her life as well as to her novels and that's really fun. A lot of the names of characters in this crop up in Jane Austen's own books. Some of the food mentioned in here is what Jane Austen herself wrote about and et as well. So this really is a book for the diehard Jane Austen fan, there's a lot you're going to enjoy from this but even if you're not that much of a diehard fan this is just a really fun light read, it's a bit of a mystery but it's set in Regency times which makes it a bit different from the typical cosy mystery genre. There's a satisfying ending as well, a bit of romance thrown in, so yes, highly recommend this one and let me know if you know it because I haven't come across many people who do, so it's always fun to know if someone else likes that one. Okay, another favourite of mine that's inspired by Pride and Prejudice is Longbourn by Joe Baker. I chose this book 
quite a few years ago now as a book club pick when I was doing a book club and it was such a great book for discussion. I think your enjoyment of it is enhanced if you know Pride and Prejudice but even if you don't you can get so much from this novel. It looks at the world of Pride and Prejudice and the home of the Bennett family from the perspective of the servants of the Bennett household. Let me share this little quote with you. The petticoat had been three inches deep in mud when Sarah retrieved it from the girl's bedroom floor and it had a night's soaking and lie already. If Elizabeth had the washing of her own petticoat, Sarah thought, she'd most likely be a sight more careful with them. I think that's brilliant and that really sums up what this book is about. Very, very clever, different perspective on Pride and Prejudice and you get so much so social history through reading this. It's not thrown in your face. I think Joe Baker does a fabulous job at just telling a very good story. Again, there's a bit of romance going on in this book, but the action of the plot all really revolves around the servants. And some of the action continues on past the ending of Pride and Prejudice, and I think she made that very believable. And the first part of the book all occurs within the story of Pride and Prejudice. But to have the sort of servant's perspective on these events is so interesting. And like I said, there's just so much historic detail that's woven into the story so, so well. And I really, really appreciate that. There's so much to discuss when you read this book, which made it a really good book club pick. And it's definitely one that I want to reread again sometime. So it stands up really well on its own merits. The language, the style of um, the writing is very good, but it's also extra fun if you're a big fan of Jane Austen and Pride and Prejudice and you want to see a bit more of that world of the novel that Jane Austen never would delve into. You know, this covers some of the grittier, darker side to Jane Austen's world that she certainly knew about and experienced, but didn't write about. So this fleshes out her work in a way that's very interesting to a contemporary reader. So yeah, a real favourite of mine. And then this, I believe, is my mum's battered old copy of this book. Uh, my mum, of course, is a big Jane Austen fan too, and this is one that she sort of handed on to me many years ago. It's a novel, although cleverly it reads like non-fiction, but it is actually fiction. And it's a letter to Alice on first reading Jane Austen by Faye Weldon. And again, this book is a collection of letters written by, well, you assume by Faye Weldon, the letters are all signed Faye, but it's to her imaginary niece, Alice. And they're a fascinating series of letters. The niece in this book is studying English literature, and she's just started to read Jane Austen, but isn't very impressed. Faye is horrified by this and writes her a series of letters in which she explains why it's so important to read Jane Austen, why Jane Austen was such a fascinating writer and is so worth reading. And as the letters progress and the story progresses, you realise that Alice wants to write herself and she's writing to her aunt asking for advice on becoming a writer and her aunt responds to this as well. So this book is as much almost essays on Jane Austen and the importance of her literary canon as it is a book about how to write. And I find it absolutely fascinating. It is a bit dated. I can't remember when it was first published, probably in the 80s. Yes, 1984. So there's a lot of fairly early feminism sentiments going on in here which to a you know modern day reader now might seem slightly strange 
but it's very interesting still to read this, to realise some of the thoughts that were going on in the 80s about feminism and Jane Austen's work, and it just is a really great book that gives you more insight into the novels. There are lots of moments of recognition too, I think when, you know, it's like one Janeite calling to another Janeite going on in this, which is really fun. And like I said, I also just really enjoy what Faye Weldon has to say about the actual craft of writing a book. And you do get involved in the story between this aunt and her niece as it um, progresses as well. So definitely one I recommend. Then for a bit of fun, I have to recommend Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. I think this is my favourite of the modern retellings of Pride and Prejudice. There is Eligible as well, which is quite fun, but I really am a fan of Bridget Jones's Diary. I think Bridget Jones is to Pride and Prejudice what Clueless was to Emma, but even better because it was a book first. So it makes a wonderful read and I just love all of the nods to Pride and Prejudice that occur in Bridget Jones. But of course it's a fabulous story in its own right too. Um, Helen Fielding did borrow from the plot of Pride and Prejudice a bit, but Bridget Jones stands on her own feet too. And it's just such a funny, funny book. If you've never read it, I really recommend it. And it's just always fun to appreciate those Pride and Pre Prejudice references in this too. So perfect light summer reading, if you fancy it. This book, I was in slightly two minds as to whether to include it or not, because I have mixed feelings about it, but many people love it. It's the Jane Austen Book Club by Karen Joy Fowler, and there are aspects of it that I really, really enjoy, and then there are aspects of it that I don't enjoy, but the parts I do enjoy about the book are those directly related to Jane Austen, and I think those parts are done really well. So I thought I would still include it in this book suggestion video. So the Jane Austen Book Club is set in the modern day. It's about a group of people, I think five women and one man, who set up a book club dedicated to Jane Austen. And they meet, I think, every month or so for a while to discuss each of Jane Austen's books. Almost everyone in this book club is a die-hard Jane Austen fan. And I really enjoy uh, many of the sort of funny moments in this where one or two of the members maybe aren't quite such big Jane Austen fans and everyone else has to be very polite when they say something like, oh, they think actually maybe Northanger Abbey is the very best of her books, or they don't like this one character so much, and you can feel this collective sort of intake of breath, <laughs> and then sort of just letting it go from everyone else in the book club who really disagrees. <laughs> and I think it's so true that Jane Austen fans are often some of the most die-hard fans and they can't bear criticism of the wonderful Jane Austen. And there are a lot of very kind of funny moments, especially if you're a huge fan of her yourself, like I am, that go on in this book because you just recognise yourself in these people and in how much they love her work and their opinions about the books. But it's just a really great premise, I think, for a story too. The idea of these people who get together to discuss Jane Austen. And then the story takes you down sort of discovering a little bit about about each of these people in the book club and you realize that all of these women and one man are struggling with some emotional aspect within their own lives generally to do with relationships by the end of the book they've all actually made a lot of progression in this way and in that way it is quite like a Jane Austen novel in that romance happens very quietly through this story, 
but by the end new relationships are, flourish are flourishing there have been some reconciliations with past lovers there's a real sense of hope and romance and optimism at the end of the book but I will say that some of the stories surrounding each of the people are a little bit dark some I found quite depressing and that to me isn't Jane Austen at all and often when I want to read a book that I think is really a lot about Jane Austen I want it to have that similar light bright and sparkling tone to it that so many of her novels do and there are definitely some darker aspects to this story that I just found hard to juxtapose in a way with the lovely Jane Austen discussion going on in it but then the very un-Jane Austen like story is kind of running alongside these book club discussions so that makes it a bit of an odd story for me but it is well written and I love the bits actually about Jane Austen's books and the sort of book club meetups that go on in here and in the end there is romance that happens in it I just don't think it's a satisfying feeling it's much much more real life kind of romance <laughs> than you get in Jane Austen which is fine but if I'm coming to a book because I want it to be a bit Jane Austen inspired, a bit in that style, then that's just not what I'm expecting. So that can be a bit of a shock. But yes, I would still recommend taking a look at this one. And then I've got a couple still fiction here. One is Miss Austen by Jill Hornby. And this is a fictional retelling of Jane Austen's life from the viewpoint of Cassandra Austen. So this book really follows Cassandra's story, but you do get Jane Austen's story in it too, told from the perspective of Cassandra. And this book attempts to tackle that knotty problem in literary history of Cassandra Austen making the decision to burn so many of Jane Austen's letters, which is always so frustrating to any lover of Jane Austen's books. There's so little known really about her life. And partly why there's so little known is because so many of her letters were destroyed by her sister Cassandra. So Jill Hornby, I think, was so clever to take that incident in, from history and try to explain why Cassandra chose to do that and I think she handles it quite convincingly I don't love the language as much in this book and there are some letters that Jane has written that Cassandra sort of reads through so there's some examples of what's meant to be Jane Austen's writing style in this book and it just to me does not match up to the original at all really which is a little bit disappointing but I really like the idea of the story behind this I love that it actually centers on Cassandra Austen because you hear so little about her generally all of the attention is on her much more famous sister so I was really interested to learn a bit more about Jane Austen's life and family but through the eyes of Cassandra. I thought that was very clever and well done. And then one of my very favourite books that again delves deeper into the world of Pride and Prejudice is The Other Bennet Sister by Janice Hadlow. And this continues the story of Mary Bennet, the plainest <laughs> and generally most disliked sister amongst the Bennets amongst the Bennett sisters and Janice Hadlow has done this incredible job at imagining Mary's story the, the book begins still within the world of Pride and Prejudice but then it moves beyond and I think that Janice has done a brilliant job at imagining that world after the end of Pride and Prejudice what comes next and you hear a lot more about many of the characters in Pride and Prejudice like Mr Collins, like Charlotte Lucas, 
like Lizzie herself, but the story really centres on Mary Bennett. And you see Mary Bennett in such a different way. She really does become a heroine in her own right in this book, and Janice Haslow manages to convince you of that, and she does a fantastic job at it as well. I've written other um, books in this, I've read other books in this line, for instance, I was just trying to read Charlotte by Helen Moffat, which follows the life of Charlotte Lucas after Pride and Prejudice, but one thing I find that so often bothers me with this type of fan fiction, essentially, is they just don't catch the tone of the language well at all. And this is one of the few I've actually been able to read without just putting down because I can't take it anymore. But I've been able to read this and also really enjoy it because I think Janice Hadlow just has that language spot on. She uses some of Jane Austen's original sentences within the text and they really are pretty seamless. And I think that that is so amazing that she was able to do that. It's not Jane Austen because who could ever be Jane Austen, frankly, but it's really well written. I notice in this she uses a lot of dialogue. Most writers of this type of book I find stay clear of too much dialogue because it just, they can't really handle it, they can't match the tone, but she matches the tone really well in this book lots and lots of dialogue which is of course very like Jane Austen so I really appreciate that and the actual story of Mary is a brilliant romance like I said she becomes a real heroine in her own right and I just loved it I loved Hadlow's imagining of what would happen to Mary and she gets such a satisfying ending so definitely one that I recommend to and then I've got some non-fiction suggestions that help you to dive a bit deeper into Jane Austen's world. So the first one I'm recommending is this. So You Think You Know Jane Austen, a literary quiz book by John Sutherland and Deirdre Le Fay. I absolutely love this. It's so much more than just a quiz book because so many of the quizzes are so hard. They're not just about facts that you can get from the books. A lot of them, a lot of the questions require you to deduce things about the novel, about the novels and to make inferences and also to know a little bit about the sort of wider context of the books and of Jane Austen's life and that historical time in history. And I really enjoy it for that reason. Even the easy quizzes I actually think are really hard and I think I know her books really well <laughs> and I couldn't answer a lot of the questions in even the easiest quizzes. So in some ways this is just a lot of fun to read for the answers as much as the actual questions. I mean it's quite fun to really challenge someone who thinks they know Jane Austen really well because I very much doubt they would get all the answers here, but it's actually really fun to challenge yourself to read them, have a think and then go and actually read the answers because there's so much knowledge in the answers about the books, about Jane Austen herself and about what both writers deduce from the novels and I absolutely love it for that reason. I had this by my bedside table for a while a year ago and it just made the perfect kind of bedside reading. I'd pick it up at night and just dip into it and I loved it. So it's that type of book, something you can just pick up, dip into and learn so much new, even about an author that you think you know really well. So absolutely love this one. And then another real favourite of mine is What Matters in Jane Austen by John Mullen. And this is such a fascinating look at Jane Austen's world and in particular the, the world of the characters in her books. John, John Mullen asks some really interesting questions, ones like how do Jane Austen's characters look? What do the characters call each other? 
Do we ever see the lower classes? Why is the weather important? Is there any sex in Jane Austen? What do characters say when the heroine is not there? What do characters read? Why is it risky to go to the seaside? And just so many more questions like that. And I love that fun take on investigating, on learning more about the novels, more about the wider historical context. This isn't a dry, dusty type of book. It's one that asks really fun, intriguing questions. And John Mullen writes the answers so well and in a very engaging way. So this is just such a fun way to learn more about Jane Austen, about the times in which she lived, and about her books and that's the reason why I really really love this book. For a more classic biography of Jane Austen, I think one of my very favourites is Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley and this is such a brilliant read because it looks at Jane Austen's life particularly from the context of the houses in which she lived and were very important to her. So it looks both actually at the houses in which she lived, but also the ones that she visited and knew about and that perhaps influenced some of the big houses that you read about in her novels. Houses do play such an important role in Jane Austen's books and they played a really important role in her life. She often struggled to know where she was going to live and had to rely upon charity from her from one of her brothers in particular a lot of the time so i think knowing that it really makes sense to write a biography particularly looking at the houses in jane austen's life and in her novels and that's what lucy worsley has done with this book and i found it absolutely fascinating I really loved it. There was a re very good TV series that came out about the same type, time as the book as well, which I really enjoyed. But really good biography that will give you very interesting insights into Jane Austen's life. So I definitely recommend it. And then this is a gorgeous book I absolutely loved. It's Dress in the Age of Jane Austen by Hilary Davidson and it was actually Janice Hadlow, the author of The Other Bennet Sister, who told me about this book and said that she'd used it when she was doing her own research and writing and that she absolutely loved it, really recommended it. So after she praised it so highly, I had to buy it myself and I'm so glad I did. This is fascinating. If you've ever wanted to know more about fashion in Regency England, about what Jane Austen would have worn, about what her characters would have worn, and where they shopped, how they shopped, how these dresses were made, what kind of fabrics they used, then I really recommend this book. It's beautifully illustrated. There are lots of gorgeous pictures and examples of, for instance, some of Jane Austen's own sewing and things like that, and some beautiful gowns from the era. But it's very well written too, and I just read it cover to cover and was just really blown away by how interesting it was. So definitely one that I recommend as well. Obviously, I recommend all of these, but really did enjoy that. And then, after looking at fashion a little bit, you might want to look at food. I'm certainly always very interested in food in books. So I absolutely love this, which is Dinner with Mr. Darcy, Recipes Inspired by the Novels and Letters of Jane Austen, and it's by Penn Vogler. She also wrote Dinner with Dickens, which is a big favourite of mine too. But she did this one first, and it's packed full of recipes, some of which Jane Austen herself um, talked about in letters and would have been served on her dining table, some of which are inspired by the novels. So the picnic parade Emma, of course, is in here. And there's so many interesting recipes 
that are of the time and it's really great to just look through and read it. Um, I admit I haven't actually made anything from this, I more just like looking through and reading about the recipes, reading what to, what would have been made and eaten at that time and it's just absolutely fascinating. But I really should try some of them. This one for gooseberry tart I think would be really nice as gooseberries are ripe right now and it says Poor 10-year-old Fanny Price arriving at Mansfield Park for the first time is so exhausted and homesick that vain was even the sight of a gooseberry tart towards giving her comfort. I remember that bit in the book, actually. That makes me want to reread Mansfield Park and make a gooseberry tart. <laughs> that would definitely be fun. So, yeah, really recommend this book, too. But those are... Uh, all of the 12 books that I think you would enjoy if you are also a big fan of Jane Austen. Let me know if any of these are favourites of yours or if you have others that you can recommend that you think I might really love. I would love to hear your recommendations too. But just before I end this, I also wanted to say that over the weekend I put up on my Instagram stories a link to my profile on a, web so on a website that's called buymeacoffee.com and I was just so touched by how many people went over to my profile there and gave a donation and I wanted to explain a bit more about that and why I set this up. A few people had asked me about how they could support my channel through donations and I hadn't even realised this was a thing to be honest, I had no idea what to use and some people had asked if I was on tip jar or Patreon, you know, things like that and I hadn't really considered this but I was having a look around and I found this website called buy me a coffee, of course my profile is buy me a tea <laughs> because I don't drink coffee <laughs> but the idea is that you can buy a creative that you follow and whose work you enjoy a tea if you so wish obviously there's absolutely no pressure to do so and I really appreciate of course the people who support me just by watching my videos liking my videos you know just sharing anything of mine that you enjoy with friends of yours helping to spread the word there are so many ways that people really support me with what I do that I appreciate so much already but when I set up this profile I thought no one would would actually you know buy me a cup of tea or donate to it anyway and I was very shy about it and I was really touched um, when so many of you did and I just wanted to say a really big thank you to those of you that have donate, donated it was so sweet and of course it helps me to keep making videos and to go places and do things that I will feed back to my YouTube but so many people left really lovely messages as well with their donations and it really touched me so I wanted to say thank you so very much and I'll put a link as well in the description box so you can see what I'm talking about if you missed out on my Instagram stories from the weekend but anyway I hope that you're all having a wonderful week thanks so much as always for watching and do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you can subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen over here so I'll see you again on Friday until then take care goodbye